I want to ask you a question, and that is, what is in your life's blueprint? I want to ask you a question, and that is, what's in your life's blueprint? This is the most important and crucial period of your lives. For what you do now and what you decide now at this age may well determine which way your life shall go. And when every building is constructed, you usually have an architect who draws a blueprint. And that blueprint serves as the pattern, as the guide, as the model for those who are to build the building. And the building is not well erected without a good, sound, and solid blueprint. Now each of you is in the process of building the structure of your life, and the question is whether you have a proper, a solid, and a sound blueprint. And I want to suggest some of the things that should be in your life's blueprint. Number one in your life's blueprint should be a deep belief in your own dignity, your own worth, and your own somebodyness. Don't allow anybody to make you feel that you are nobody. Now that means you should not be ashamed of your color. You know, it's very unfortunate that in so many instances, our society has placed a stigma on color. Don't be ashamed of your color. Don't be ashamed of your biological features. Somehow you must be able to say in your own lives that, and really believe that I am black and I am beautiful and believe that in your heart. Now in your life's blueprint, be sure that you have the principle of some bunny. Secondly, in your life blueprint, you must have the basic principle the determination to achieve excellence in your various fields of endeavor. It's going to be deciding as the days and years unfold what you will do in life, what your life's work will be. And once you discover what it will be, set out and do it and do it well. And I say to you, my young friends, that doors are opening to each of you. Doors of opportunity are opening to each of you that were not open to your mothers and your fathers. The great challenge is facing you to be ready to enter these doors as they open. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the great essayist, said in a lecture back in 1871 that if a man can write a better book or preach a better sermon or make a better mouse trap than his neighbor, even if he builds his house in the woods, the world will make no fear. This hadn't always been true, but it will become increasingly true. So I would urge you to study hard, to burn the midnight oil. I would say to you, don't drop out of school. And when you discover what you're going to be in life, set out to do it as if God Almighty called you at this particular moment in history to do it. Set out to do a good job and do that job so well that the living, the dead, and the unborn couldn't do it any better. Be the best of whatever you are. We already have some noble examples of black men and black women who demonstrated to us that human nature cannot be cataloged. They in their own lives have walked through long and desolate nights of oppression, and yet they've risen up and plunged against cloud-filled nights of affliction, new and blazing stars of inspiration. From a poverty-stricken area of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Mary and Anderson rose up to be the world's greatest control toe so that a Tuscanini could say that a voice like this comes only once in a century. From the red hills of Gordon County, Georgia, in the arms of a mother who can neither read nor write, Roland Hayes rose up to be one of the world's greatest singers and carried his melodious voice into palaces and mansions of kings and queens. From crippling circumstances, there came a George Washington Carver to carve for himself an imperishable niche in the annals of science. There was a star in the diplomatic sky, and then came Ralph Bunch, the grandson of a slave preacher, and he reached up and grabbed it and allowed it to shine in his life with all of its scintillating beauty. There was a star in the athletic sky, and then came Jackie Robinson in his day, and William Mays in his day, with their powerful bats and their calm spirits. Then came Jesse Owens with his fleet and dashing feet. Then came Joe Lewis and Muhammad Ali with their educated fists. All of them came to tell us that we can be somebody, and to justify the conviction of the poet, fleecy locks and black complexion cannot forfeit nature's claim. Skin may differ, but affection dwells in black and white the same. If I were so tall as to reach the pole, or to grasp the ocean at a span, I must be measured by my soul. The mind is the standard of the man. Finally, and finally, in your life's blueprint, 
must be a commitment to the internal principles of beauty, love, and justice. Don't allow anybody to pull you so low as to make you hate them. Self-respect to the point that you do not struggle for justice. You have a responsibility to seek to make life better for everybody, and so you must be involved in the struggle for freedom and justice. Now in this struggle for freedom and justice, there are many constructive things that we all can do and that we all must do, and we must not give ourselves to those things which will not solve our problems. You've heard the word nonviolent, and you've heard the word violent. I happen to believe in nonviolent. We've struggled with this method with young people and adults alike all over the South, and we have won some significant victories. And we've got to struggle with it all over the North because the problems are as serious in the North as they are in the South. And so our slogan must not be burn, baby, burn. It must be build, baby, burn. Organize, baby, organize. Yes, our slogan must be learn, baby, learn, so that we can earn, baby, earn. And with powerful commitment, I believe that we can transform dark yesterdays of injustice into bright tomorrows of justice and humanity. Let us keep going toward the goal of selfhood, toward the realization of the dream of brotherhood, and toward the realization of the dream of understanding and goodwill. Let nobody stop us. I close by quoting, once more, the man that the young lady quoted, that magnificent black bard who is now passed on. Langston Hughes. One day he wrote a poem entitled Mother to Son. The mother didn't always have her grammar right, but she uttered words of symbolic profundity. Well, son, I tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it and boards torn up, and places with no carpet on the floor bare. But all the time I've been climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on the steps, cause you find it's kinda hard. Don't you fall now, for I still going, honey. I still climbing, and life for me ain't been no crystal stair. Well, life for none of us has been a crystal stair, but we must keep moving, we must keep going. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl, but by all means, keep moving.